Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all 389 Bach chorale harmonizations. Today we're looking at Christ und zu Herr zum Jordan kam, which translates to Christ our Lord came to the Jordan. This is a super fascinating chorale. We finally have another modal chorale to look at today, which is really interesting. Um, it oscillates between ideas of D Dorian and a Dorian and uh, Bach's harmonic language here is indicative of the fact that he was bridging the gap between his tonal uh, faculties and the modal harmonic language of the composers before him. So super interesting to look at, um, as is the case with all of my modal analyses. Take it with a grain of salt because I don't consider myself as well versed in modal music or music of the Renaissance as I am with box music. Um, so the chord progressions might seem a little bit strange, but it's more so a byproduct of the fact that the melody doesn't always uh, fit into a particular key. Um, but for actu actually, for the most part, um, the harmony functions the way that you would expect it to. Um, but there are going to be some interesting progressions that sort of challenge my. Um, my expectations. So let's get started. So no key signature. That's the first sort of misleading thing here. We start really pronounced on D minor. And I think, um, and uh, you might have disagreements here, but I think we're in the key of D minor here. But to be even more specific, we're in the key of D Dorian. And uh, the reason why I say that is because we have B naturals and C uh, B naturals and C naturals with D minor opening here. This doesn't just sound like a four chord going to a one chord in the key of A minor, despite the fact that we ha have a perfect authentic cadence at the end of the first phrase in the key of A minor. Um, so there's going to be some point in this phrase where we modulate from D to A, uh, but for now I think we're in the key of D minor. And the fact that we could so freely move between D and F, uh, definitely something that's more indicative of modal music than tonal music. Um, so we start off with a one chord, uh, just a tonic D minor, with some passing tones in the soprano and the tenor. And then we get another D minor chord again, just the there's some voice exchange between the tenor and, well actually there's no voice exchange, they just uh, skip up a third each and the also also skips up a fourth or leaps up a fourth and then we get another passing tone in the uh, we get another passing tone in the uh, tenor sorry i just had a some brain fog there and then we immediately go to c major this is really interesting because c major would just be a seven chord right um, and we would expect that to go to one of two places, either back to one, like in a true sort of Renaissance context, or to three, which I think we do right here, F, C, F, and A. It goes to three. So like I do with all of my analyses, you might have been taught that seven doesn't really exist. Um, I, I think it's kind of hard to refute the fact that it exists, but I, I took a harmony class where the uh, instructor was adamant about the fact that seven chords were just not really um, common enough to sort of stand on their own. So I offer the analysis of 5-3 going to 3 as well in the key of D minor or D minor with a Dorian, um, hint, a hint of Dorian, uh, essence of Dorian, if you will. But I think also what's happening here is that this 3 chord is actually where we modulate to the key of A minor and this F now a 6 in the key of A minor. Interestingly though, um, we go immediately back to C major on the next beat, and that's kind of an unusual chord progression. Uh, it really just sounds like 5-1-5 five, five in the key of F, but I don't think we've modulated to the key of F at all. This is sort of just a byproduct of modality where um, they valued consonances in much more of an egalitarian fashion than uh, composers of the common practice period who focused on the tonic and contextualizing the chord through functional harmony. Um, but afterwards we go from three, uh, which is just a root position C major chord, to C, A, E, and C. That is our tonic triad, A minor, 
in first inversion, passing tone in the bass, E, G sharp, E, and B. Notice how we have the leading tone when we're getting ready for the, uh, we're getting ready for the cadence, and then we have an anticipation, an anticipation, a uh, non-chord tone in the soprano before we cadence on one. Really interesting, um, also because we have this G sharp to to C going on in the in the tenor, as opposed to it resolving upwards. Um, but that could just be a byproduct of the fact that he wanted a complete triad. Um, otherwise, it would be three. It would be an open fifth. That would be very Renaissance if he cadenced on an open fifth. Um, all right. So moving on, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of D minor. And I'm convinced that this section's more D minor than anything else because C sharps are pretty consistent. Um, in fact, the only time we don't have C sharp is um, this beat right here, but we haven't modulated yet. So um, it's pretty it's pretty clear that we move to the key of D minor rather than D Dorian, as opposed to how we sort of start in D Dorian uh, pretty unashamedly because we have like, you know, B going to C um, right there very clearly. So here we have uh, E, B, E, and G natural, not G sharp. I had someone comment on one of my videos uh, before, um, one of the videos I made previously on a chorale where we have this juxtaposition between the minor and the major, and I might have been tempted to call this a two chord in the key of minor, but no, I think this is a still a five chord in the key of A, um, whatever this is, Aeolian or Dorian, um, I don't really know. Uh, it's not uncommon for music of the Renaissance to make use of the leading tone. In fact, it's quite common in cadential situations uh, to bring attention to the tonic. Um, but that's not really what he's doing with the leading tone here. This is more a byproduct of the fact that he's thinking vertically. Um, but that being said, I do think this is a five chord. It immediately goes to A minor again. It's just a five chord without, uh, without a raised third. That's all it is, and that's okay. So next we have uh, G, B, E, and B. Um, that might be another rootless, or sorry, another um, natural third five chord, but I think actually this B is an accented non-chord tone, and this is actually C sharp diminished. It's also part of a passing, uh, a passing figure here, A, G, natural, F. So we can call this seven, six, four of four, as C sharp is the leading tone to D, and uh, we can go ahead and say that we've modulated to D here, and this is actually just seven, six, four. Um, and sure enough, it does go to D minor afterwards, F, D, F, and A. It's just in first inversion, passing tone in the alto, and then we have B, D, D, and G. Um, depending on how you look at this chord, uh, yeah, you know, this is this is a four chord. It's major because it's not B flat, it's B natural, right? But Bach uses four or six chords a lot in melodic minor. A lot of the times they even come as seven chords, uh, where we'd see four, six, five going to five, which is kind of what we have going on here. We have C sharp, E, and G going on, but this D is being suspended over the entirety of the chord. So we kind of have a passing seven here, or a passing five without the root, depending on how you look at the chord. Um, but it's not complete because this D is um, being held over, and it never fully resolves on the next beat anyways. So this is kind of implied. I'll put a question mark underneath it. There's like some movement implying dominance in between it, especially because of the fact that it goes through a root position one chord. And in the last, you know, the last couple of chorales I've been trying to mark four going to a passing seven going to one, which Bach does often, but the alto is very curious here. It doesn't have an A in it. It doesn't have a G in it. It doesn't have a C sharp. Um, so he, he, he seldom doubles the leading tone, but it doesn't have anything to contribute to the passing seven chord. It's just the movement in the lower voices. So I'll put that there. Maybe it's being implied. Maybe it's not. We have a D minor triad passing tone in this, uh, the tenor, 
We then have a 5 chord with a 4-3 suspension over the bass, and then we cadence on 1 in a perfect authentic cadence. Already so much analysis just in the first uh, section. Um, and then of course that repeats, and then the next cadence we have is in the key of A minor, or A Aeolian, um, whatever pitch collection you choose to define it as. Uh, it definitely is A minor, however you choose to flavor it. Um, but we're still in D minor um, for a while. Uh, we have D, F, A, and D, that's just another tonic triad, some passing tones in the lower voices, and then here we go, this is sort of like D Dorian feel. We have D, uh, sorry, B, D, D, and G. There is our four chord in first inversion, passing tone in the bass. Um, this is definitely indicative of Dorian, so maybe there's an idea of uh, D Dorian starting the phrase. Uh, I'll put that there, even though we've stayed in the realm of D being our tonic, changing the pitch collection to Dorian in this phrase rather than being in melodic minor in the next phrase, or in the previous phrase, rather. Then we have uh, G, G, C, and G. I think this C is an accented non-chord tone, and this is just root position, G major triad. And then we have C, G, C, and E. Uh, that is a... Uh, seven chord, which is where four wants to go. But what I will offer as an analysis, um, as alternative analysis, is that this is also possibly uh, five, six of seven. Actually, mm, is that right? Yeah, that technically would be right, depending on how you look at it. Uh, what I will offer is that if you do look at the section in the key of A minor, I will say that this could be f uh, five, six of three, and you could call this three, um, or seven, uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but all in all, uh, I think it's this seven chord that actually turns us into the key of A minor. So I'll... Uh, I'll leave this analysis underneath it just in case you hear A minor starting here, um, but I don't really hear it until we get C in the bass uh, for me. That's just how it sounds to me. So this is a, a pivot chord in this sort of modulation zone. Like I said, there are other places you could say it modulates. I think what matters is that we get to A minor before the cadence because it sounds a little bit more like A minor just a bit before the cadence. Then we have B, C, E, and A. This B is an accented non-chord tone, and this is just a reposition tonic triad, like so. Which is again kind of how we go from A before, where we have three going to one, which is interesting. Despite the fact that this one is uh, inverted, it's still three going to one, which is interesting. We then have E, B, E, and A. Uh, I think this A is a 4-3 suspension over the bass, and this is just a big 5 chord. And then it gets fully realized on beat 2, before we cadence on 1. We've had three perfect authentic cadences so far, um, despite the fact that we're using more or less modal pitch collections, and, uh, and the fact that Bach has a very strong... Uh, cadential structure, just perfect, authentic, perfect, authentic, perfect, authentic. That's kind of unusual. I think you usually see more variety. Um, it's not It's not unprecedented, though. It's like you, you see it from time to time, but just something worth pointing out. Okay, so the next cadence we have is on the next measure, or sorry, the next system, and it's a perfect, authentic cadence in the key of A minor. Um, or A Dorian, depending on how you look at it. I analyzed it in A Dorian, um, but I think you could equally hear it in the key of C major too. So we could call this, um, well actually, let's analyze it in A Dorian first because I think that would be fun. Um, we have another A minor tri uh, triad here with a passing seventh on the bass. And then we have F sharp, A, A, and D. That's a four, six, five chord. D major over F sharp. Then we have G, B, G, and D. That's our seven chord. That's where four wants to go. And then we have C, C, G, and E. 
with some passing tones in the soprano and the tenor, and seven wants to go to three or to one. Uh, this is a very normal progression, but the fact that we're seeing these chords, the quality that they are, is very indicative of modality, as we usually see four, six, five, and uh, seven as minor and diminished chords, respectively. And then we get F, A, A, and C, which is where three wants to go. That's a F, ma a F major triad in a root position, just a regular old six chord. And then we have B, B, or sorry, D, B, F, and D. That is a two chord in first inversion. Uh, B diminished over D. Passing tones in the soprano and the tenor again. Sorry, let me fix my pencil lead real quick. We then have a five chord in root position, E, G sharp, B, and B, with some filigree going on in the alto in anticipation for the cadence. And then we have one. So really this progression is just a big cycle of fifth sequence. One, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. Cycle of fifths in sort of a Dorian context that ends in minor. Um, or with a leading tone. If it was truly Dorian, there'd be no leading tone. But even in cadential situations in the Renaissance, they'd use the leading tone to create a sense of finality. Um, but this section undeniably can be heard in the key of C major. That's how I heard it the first time. So if you do want to look at this in the key of C major, we have five, six, um, five, six, five of five, because that would be D major, or D7 over F sharp. Then we'd have five, one, and then we have four. And then you could say this four was our modulation point. You could say this was our modulation point. You could even say the C major chord is our modulation point. All these chords are diatonic to the key of A minor too. It's just depending where you hear it. Okay, moving on. Our next cadence is a half cadence in the key of B minor. Uh, and I think it's B minor because we have C sharps and B naturals. If it was C natural and B natural, I would think Dorian, but all in all, uh, I'll go ahead and actually write A Dorian here as well, kind of where this starts to happen at the end of the phrase, sort of how D Dorian gets introduced after the phrase ends in minor. Um, A Dorian, I think, gets introduced after the phrase in A minor. But yeah, we're, we're going to modulate to the key of D at some point. We have... E major immediately afterwards. Notice we have E major immediately afterwards it's as opposed to E minor because the G sharp is held over. And then we have A, A, E, and C. That's our tonic triad and root position. Passing seventh in the tenor, D, F, D, and B. That is a two chord um, in root, uh, sorry, uh, first inversion. So two, six. And then we have E and G going up here, and it's kind of similar to this progression we have here, where we have the makings of what could be a 5-7 chord, but it's minor. So I'll go ahead and offer that analysis, but it's not a very strong um, passing chord the same way that 2-6 wants to go to 5. I just wanted to show that there's still like bass movement going on, even though we don't have the raised... Uh, uh, leading, we don't have the raised seventh. I think the bypro uh, this is more so a byproduct of the fact that we're going to F natural here and Bach is avoiding the augmented second. Um, that would be very angular for the time. Augmented seconds aren't unheard of, it's just uh, that they're uncommon. So there's a little bit of a passing 5-7 there, just note that it's minor and kind of a weak passing 7. Um, but then we go to uh, F, A, C, and A. That's a root position F major triad. Um, and in the key of A minor, that's 6. But in the key of D minor, that's 3. And we've modulated via this before. Or sorry, we haven't modulated this direction, but we did modulate from D to A using the inverse, or the flip direction. So we went from D to A through F, and now we're going from A to D through F, which I think is kind of interesting. We have some passing tones in the inner voices here. Let's double check. Yeah, that's not a chord um, that we can analyze. B, D, A, and F. Actually, now that I say that, that's sort of like a passing six chord, but 
uh, and actually three does want to go to six, so I will go ahead and say that that's like a six four three chord. Um, kind of sort of in passing there. I know the handwriting's a little hard to read, but we will say that there is sort of a passing chord there because three does want to go to six. Oh, and I do actually have that in my notes. That's good. That's good that I identified that. Uh, then we have E, C sharp, E, and G. That is C sharp diminished over E, which is a 7 6 chord with some passing tones in the lower voices. Um, and then we just have a pass. We have, yeah, we just have passing tones. That's not really a, a chord that's worth analyzing. I guess it is kind of like a a two chord ish, but I I don't think it's really worth it to to analyze. We then have C sharp E A and A, that is a five chord in first inversion. So seven going to five, that's kind of interesting. Like two voicings of dominant functioning chords in succession is kind of weird, um, but not unprecedented. We've seen it before, it's just it's uncommon. Passing seventh in the soprano. Then we have D, A, D, and F, which is an interesting uh, chord to have immediately after a five, because that would be D minor, which is four. Um, and then we cadence on five in root position, A major, which is uh, interesting. So having D, ma uh, D minor as a chord before a half cadence is interesting. A lot of the times we see the chord in root position uh, because, uh, or sorry, in first inversion, uh, because like in this case, we would have F going down to, or sorry, how would that work? A lot of the times we see Phrygian half cadences where we see four, six going to five, um, as opposed to four in root position. Okay, next we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of D minor. And this is really D minor because of the fact that we have B flats going on as well. So we have D, F, A, and D. That is a four chord. Um, oh goodness, what am I talking about? I'm so, so sorry. I'm going to walk that back. I was thinking in the key of A minor. This is not a four chord at all. This is a tonic triad. Goodness, wow. I'm so, so sorry for, men, uh, for, for uh, slipping up there. I was talking so much about the A chord. Um, that I thought we were in the key of A. No, we're still in the key of D. However, we're moving from melodic minor to sort of more of like a truer minor. So sorry about the noisy cars in the background. I live on a busy street. Um, but we have B flats and C sharps, which is very indicative of the fact that we are really in a minor key here. Uh, we have a tonic triad in root position with some passing tones in these voices. Um, which is sort of like a passing 5-6, but I don't think it's worth really analyzing. It's uh, not really contributing much to the texture. Um, we have B-flat, D, D, and F, which is a B-flat major triad in root position. Uh, that's a 6 chord in the key of D minor. And then we have passing tone in the bass and a skip in the tenor. That is a chord tone still. We then have G, B-flat, E, and G. That is an E diminished triad in first inversion, so 2 6. We then have F, A, E, and A. Maybe the most interesting chord in the entire um, <laughs> chorale, because this is like a 3 chord in root position, but it's also a 7 chord, and it doesn't have a fifth. And I thought, well, maybe there's an accented non chord tone going on. No, it's not. The C sharp would turn it into an augmented triad. Um, which I guess would be, uh, I guess it would be okay if we were thinking melodic minor, but I don't, I don't think so. It's not really expressed in the, in the same way, uh, because it's going to six anyways, right? B flat or uh, yeah, B flat, B flat, D and F, both B flats in each of the lower voices. So yeah, this is a really interesting chord. Two going to three which is weird, and then, but three does go to six, so that is where you would expect it to go, um, with a passing tone in the bass. We then have, uh, again, uh, E diminished over G, so E, B flat, E, and G, or sorry, I called this E, G, B flat, E, and G. So there's our two chord in first inversion, which is where six wants to go. So we have this like cyclical progression going on here, 6, 2, 3, 6, 2, 
and then of course we would expect this to cadence on 5 going to 1, A, E, C sharp, and E. It's a 5, a five chord in root position, sort of like this double filigree thing we're going on, going on just sort of like this phrase right here, um, and then we cadence on uh, D minor. So that's interesting, there's definitely some parallelism going on between this phrase right here and this phrase right here. Very interesting. All right, last phrase. We have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of A, um, and I think we're in the key of A minor like right away, like this D minor chord um, is four in the key of A. Um, but the interesting thing is that uh, definitely we're in A Dorian as well because we get the same thing going on here as we do up here. We have F sharp, D, A, and D. Instead of four, six, five, we have four, six, which is indicative of Dorian, which is why I think we're in Dorian and not in C major here. But I will offer the C major analysis if you just totally hear it that way, or if you've been asked to analyze it through a purely tonal lens. We then have G, B, G, and D, our root position seven chord there, passing tones in the lower voices. Then we have B, B, G, and D, that's just the first inversion of the G major chord that turns back into root position on two and. And then we have C, C, G, and E, our three chord. You can see what's happening here, our progression of the cycle of fifths. Passing tone in the tenor, very active tenor line. And then we have F, A, A, and D. So we see the cycle going on here. However, it gets interrupted early by going to a four chord. It typically wants to go to 6, but remember, that's talking about the bass motion. The bass still goes to 6. F is the 6th scale degree in the key of A minor, um, and the fact that it goes there means that you could spell whatever chord you want on top of it. Um, uh, so this is really just a sub for, for 6. Uh, chord, uh, chord substituting is something that Bach does all the time. It's the bass that sort of governs uh, what's going to be on top of it, but there's lots of possibilities for what could be spelled from that bass tone. Then we have E, A, E, and C. In true tonal fashion, our 1, 6, 4 chord. Neighbor tone in the bass. Then we have a... Um, that's interesting. We have a suspension and a, like a delayed passing tone, like a 5, 4 going on, um, where we have E, G sharp, E, and B. That's our five chord, but then we get the, oh, we get the delayed seventh, sorry. I was thinking in D minor again. I'm like, that was, that's kind of an interesting thing to have happen. And then we cadence on major, which is also something that you see in the Renaissance from time to time is ending on a major triad um, and have it not be a half cadence. But all in all, um, I also added that bracket because it's a, uh, um, something that, that a lot of textbooks have you do. So all in all, this is super interesting chorale. Uh, I love modal transitional music where it, it's like looking back in time and seeing that even though a lot of these things were just understood by composers, like the way that harmony worked and the sound of the time, um, they were still aware of the fact that music of uh, previous centuries or previous decades had its own sound too. And the fact that Bach could compose and sort of code switch between his harmonic languages are, is, is really interesting. So, um, yeah, super fascinating chorale. The fact that it like oscillates between D and A the entire time is really interesting. Um, it's like a reflection of the fact that the melody kind of does the same thing. Um, but yes, yeah, super fascinating chorale. Uh, the um, the fact that there's ambiguity between like A Dorian and C major um, is also really fascinating as well, and uh, D Dorian and F major as well in the little uh, sections um, is really interesting. On that note, I'm going to leave you all with this analysis. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and continuing to support the channel. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.